Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We are ready. National Stem Cell Foundation, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is the National Stem Cell Foundation. How do you hear me? We heard you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. Hi, I'm Tawana Andrew, and we are here with the National Stem Cell Foundation with students from all over Kentucky at the Kentucky Science Center and have students tuning in from 40 National STEM Scholar classrooms in 23 states. So let's get right into it. Let's get our first question up here. Hi, my name is Hamilton Gover, and my question is from Krebs Middle School in Hightstown, New Jersey. Considering technological advancements, how will the Artemis lunar program look different from the Apollo missions? You know, that's a great question. Artemis, we're going back to the moon, but we're going to do it a little bit different this time. And if there was one word that I could sum it up with, it's we're going to do it sustainably. We're going to go and stay. And so to do that, some of our approaches and technologies have to be different. We have to be more, uh, more capable to sustain ourselves and recycle everything that's supporting us. And so right now on the station, we're re researching some of those technologies that are needed to do that. How to scrub the air so that we can recycle the air. How do we recycle our water so that we don't have to constantly resupply? Because that gets harder the further and further we get away from, from the earth. So when we go back, this time we're going to stay. And uh, the Artemis is an exciting program and, and it's uh, it, we're gonna make giant leaps over the next years hi my name is Corbin and I and my question is from Lee County Middle School in Leesburg Georgia what do you think is the most important discovery ever made on the space station Well, that's another great question, and, and I think it would be very hard to identify a singular scientific discovery that's, that's come from the International Space Station as being the singular greatest. But I will have to say, though, it has been an incredible opportunity to demonstrate that we can live in space for a long time. Uh, we've had humans, astronauts, living continuously now on board the International Space Station for 19 years, and we've been doing scientific research all along. That scientific research spans all sorts of different subject areas, from Earth and space science to physical science, biological sciences, technology demonstrations. We do educational outreach, much like we're doing today. Um, and we also do a fair amount of human research where astronauts serve as the subject. 300 different experiments going on at any given time, some that astronauts interact with inside the space station, some are going on outside the space station and require minimal interaction from the astronauts directly, but there's constant scientific discovery going on up here. Thank you. Hi, my name is Abby and my question is from Moraine Middle School in Dozeman, Wisconsin. Are there any behind the scenes traditions and astronauts that astronauts and crews have relative to space flight? You know, that's one of the, the special parts of, of, of space flight, is getting to participate in those traditions. Uh, you, be, it makes you feel connected to all those that have gone before you, and, and it kind of puts in place where you're at in that whole history of human spaceflight. And so for us, you know, a lot of that starts when we launched out of Baikonur, out of the Cosmodrome, the, the same place that Yuri Gagarin launched, you, you know, decades ago. The first man in space launched from the same launch pad that we launched. And so all of those traditions make you feel connected to that past. And it also gives you hope for the future and where we're going, knowing that we all make our small contributions and we're able to, to get to these places that we, that we strive for. You know, the next stop is the moon, and then after that, it's Mars. And so those traditions are very important. Thank you. Hi, my name is Carson, and I'm from, and my question is from Monticello Middle School in Monticello, Illinois. What happens when you chew gum and blow a bubble in space? 
Well, that's that's a great question. I, I think it would depend on where you are. Uh, if you're inside the space station, if we had chewing gum, I'd demonstrate it, uh, how we could blow a bubble just like you do on Earth. The difference is that when I could spit my gum out, and that bubble would float right here in front of me. So fluids behave differently in space, and we thought we'd do a little demonstration for you. I have Nick fly closer to the camera here, and we have one of our drink bags filled with tropical punch. So it's a red drink that we hope that you can see well and get an idea of how fluids behave in space. And there are two big globs right there, and Nick's going to drink those up after we play with them here a little bit. Hi, my name is Stefan Perrier, and my question is from Riverside Intermediate Media School in Fishers, Indiana. Do you, do you ever have to do any difficult maneuvers on the space station as a result of microgravity environment? Yeah, so when we first get to the space station, moving around in microgravity is really difficult, and it takes a it takes some time to get used to it. And so Drew's showing you now how we fly around, and so that's that's the difficult part is figuring out how to to move around and not bounce into the walls and all the different scientific equipment. Uh, after a while, you adapt to it and you get you get used to floating around and everything floating around with you, and then it becomes fun. So you can uh, you can play games with your crewmate, like uh, you know if he's if he's getting in the way. Maybe maybe I want to just uh, put him out of the way so I can take my crewmate and I can sit him in a place and then I don't I don't have to worry about him or I can spin him around and try to see if I can get him motion sick. <laughs> Hello, my name is uh, Wesley and oh wait first thank you for your answer. Um, my name is Wesley, and my question is from uh, Lorenzo Memorial School in Old Orchard Beach, uh, Maine. And what do you do for your spare time in space? Well, just like you can imagine, if you were uh, away from home for a long time, staying connected with people on Earth is important. So we do spend time con staying connected with our families. Uh, but certainly a favorite astronaut pastime is looking out the window back at the Earth. We have a number of windows that look back on Earth in the Russian segment and the U.S. segment of the International Space Station with a beautiful view of the Earth and looking out at space. We see sunsets and sunrises every 45 minutes. We make a full trip all the way around the Earth in an hour and a half and it's beautiful and it's an opportunity of a lifetime so we like to spend a lot of time taking pictures and video out the windows. Thank you for the answer. Hi, my name is Destin Dorsey Destin and my question is from Riverside Intermediate School in Fishers, Indiana. What is your favorite thing about space and the coolest thing you experience in the space station? You know, one of the coolest experiences that uh, that I've had up here, we had a chance to share just a few weeks ago. Uh, we put on spacesuits, went outside the space station, and, and did a spacewalk. And and uh, getting to do that with a friend, and uh, getting to do something as uh, as complicated and challenging as a spacewalk can be, but then also to be out there on the station, holding on, staring out over the Earth as it glides underneath you 250 miles below, as you're flying through space at 17,000 miles per hour is just one of the most breathtaking experiences I've ever had. Thank you. My name, hi, my name is uh, Delshawn, and my question is from Dean Russ Middle School in Canton, Georgia. What kind of safety equipment is always within reach at different parts of the space station? Some of our most extensive training prior to launching, uh, it, it begins almost two years prior to launch, uh, is emergency training and how to respond to emergencies, both on our launch vehicle, but also then while we're on board the International Space Station. So we have masks so that we can always breathe clean air in the event that the air were to become um, poisoned from smoke or, an, or another toxin. Um, we also have a lot of equipment to measure that, to make sure that we know what the content of the atmosphere we're breathing 
breathing is, whether that be from smoke or another chemical. Uh, we also have pressure measuring devices in the event that if there was a puncture in the hull or the outside of the space station that causing our atmosphere to leak out, that we have multiple instruments to measure that pressure so that we constantly know whether, uh, whether there is a breach in the hull of some sort because that's obviously something that would be a an, an, uh, critical emergency that we would want to know about. Thank you. Hi, my name is Matthew, and my question is from Desert Ridge Middle School in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Are there any special foods you eat or things you do to celebrate events like birthdays or holidays? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, celebrating holidays and, and special birthdays are are a, a, a wonderful thing that we can do as a crew, and it really brings us closer together. Especially considering that there there's so many. Uh, we've got a crewmate flying through right now with a little bit of cargo. There's so many uh, different nationalities on board. You know, we've got Russian cosmonauts, we've got an Italian astronaut, uh, American astronauts, and and being able to celebrate together brings us together uh, as a crew and helps us appreciate just the, the different cultures that we all come from. You know, this month we've got three birthdays amongst the crew and they all happen in the same week. So you can bet that we're gonna, we're gonna do our best to make some space birthday cake out of what we have and, uh, and celebrate. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ansley and my question is from Byron Middle School in Byron, Minnesota. How do you sleep? Is there a bed? Well, we each have our own crew quarters that's about the size of a phone booth. And the four U.S. or the three American and one Italian astronaut, Luca, who we just saw float through a minute ago, live in one segment. And then our two Russian colleagues have their own crew quarters as well that are also about the size of a phone booth. And inside, we all have sleeping bags. And with those sleeping bags, we just fasten to the wall, and it kind of secures us. They have to be tacked down in a couple of places just to kind of hold you in one place. But believe it or not, they're all, all of our, our sleeping bags are just on the wall, and some of us are in the ceiling, and some of us are in the floor. Because, of course, there is no up in space, so you can put your sleeping bag in any orientation in your little crew quarters. Thanks for the answer. Hi, my name is Telltale, and my question is from Sand Ridge Junior High in Roy, Utah. Are there ever any practical jokes that happen, like water fights? You know, a sense of humor, and, and, the, and the crew has a great sense of humor, and, and we find lots of reasons to laugh up here. But, that, you know, that's a really great question because humor is one of those things that helps us support us over the long haul. You know, I'm going to be up here a little over 200 days. Drew's going to be up here 260 days. Christina's going to be up here almost a year. And so we're up here for a long time. And so having that sense of humor to help maintain balance is, is super important. And it, it just really highlights the, the importance of being able to work closely on teams. You know, we got involved with this profession. The, we come from all different walks of life. And the one thing that we all have in common is that we work well together with other people and uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a critical life skill thank you my name is Mathen and my question is from Larranger Memorial School in Old Orchard Beach Maine can you see other planets without a telescope and is there a view that takes your breath away Well, of course, the planet that we see best, uh, as I mentioned before, through the windows here in the International Space Station, the Earth, and it is beautiful. We, while we can, we, you know, we don't have the atmosphere that we're looking through out at the cosmos, and we do get better views of stars and uh, other planets, but certainly looking at our Earth is the most magnificent thing. We also have a tremendous view of the moon as well. Without without looking through our atmosphere, it is it's extremely clear and extremely bright. And uh, I'd say that's second only to the Earth. Thank you. My name is Sydney, and my question is from Byron Middle School in Byron, Minnesota. Do different nationalities share different special things like food or music? 
Yes, you know, that gets to what I I'd mentioned earlier. Part of the specialness of being up here is, is being able to participate in that international crew and to share those experiences. And so we'll have a dinner where all we have is, is Russian food. And then, you know, we'll have a, a meal where we have Italian food. You just, uh, you know, in the pantry, we've got tiramisu. Can't go wrong there. And and so we, we share those foods. We get around. We share music, traditional songs. Uh, it's just a, it's a way to draw us together and, and to really appreciate the fact that we're doing what we're doing up here on the space station not necessarily the crew we're doing it not as individual individuals from different nations we're doing it as as individuals from humanity and we're doing it together thank you hi my name is dawson and my question is from breckenridge county middle school in Harn, kentucky how are astronauts chosen for the for each mission That's a great question. Uh, the The short answer is that uh, astronauts, we take turns, uh, and we, right now we have uh, there are, we have astronauts that have experience, and we have new rookie astronauts that uh, are making their first flight, like Nick and I, and so we want to get experience to as many astronauts as possible. You and your generation are going to grow up watching the Artemis uh, missions take place, and your generation will get to be part of the generation that. Goes to the goes to the Mars, continues our presence uh, in and around the Moon, on the surface of the Moon, and in orbit around the Moon. Whether you want to be an astronaut, whether you want to be an engineer, a scientist, or anything at all, there's a place for you in in science and technology in the space program, and uh, and you all are the future generation of astronauts. Thank you. My name is Drew, and my question is from Dean Rusk Middle School in Canton, Georgia. What kind of experiments do you have on the space station right now, and what is the process for choosing experiments? So during uh, my stay on the space station, there's going to be uh, approximately 300 different experiments that take place at any given time. And, and those span that spectrum that Drew uh, mentioned earlier, whether it's physical sciences where we're trying to discover new materials, you know, we're, we're looking at, uh, at, at different uh, construction of, of rubber materials or fiber optic materials. Those are two that I just come to my mind right now. Uh, whether it's biology and we're looking at how cells are affected or how they respond to different medications up here, looking for cures for things like Alzheimer's and cancer. And, and, and so th it spans the spectrum. The way those are chosen, you know, the ISS, the, the space station, is a national laboratory. And so the National Research Council, along with NASA and all our partner nations, determine, you know, they, they rank order the experiments and, and their potential to, to have a dramatic impact on everyone on the ground or our ability to go few, deeper into space. They make those decisions. We have the privilege of being up here to, to be the hands and the eyes of the scientists that are conducting these, these investigations. And it's, a, it's, a, it's an honor to be part of this massive program. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lauren, and my question is from Owensboro Middle School in Owensboro, Kentucky. What happens when you cough or sneeze in space? Well, I think if you let out a sudden jet of air out of your nose the, the way you do in a sneeze on Earth, if you did that up here and your feet were not fixed, it probably would be like a small propulsive jet, as Nick will kind of demonstrate here. If I sneezed, I would, it might blow me back just, just a touch, just like that. But otherwise, it's just like a sneeze on Earth. You still need a Kleenex to blow your nose. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Trey, and my question is from Evergreen School in Shoreline, Washington. What happens when you cut your hair in space? So I'm standing right next to the best barber in the cosmos. Uh, he gives the best free haircuts in space. Uh, if you cut it, uh, it just goes everywhere, so we have to hook a vacuum to it. So as you come around with the clippers on your hair, the vacuum sucking up all of the hair as it uh, as it gets cut away. Uh, it actually works pretty pretty good, and uh, and so I cut Drew's hair, and Drew cuts my hair. 
Nick and Andrew for answering all of our questions. And thank you to the students, the teachers, NASA, the astronauts, and everyone who helped make this event possible. The National STEM Scholar Program is proud to help create the next generation of STEM pioneers. <laughs> It was our pleasure to join you, our absolute pleasure. This is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants from National Stem Cell Foundation. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications. Thank you. 